Are you tired of your 3D printer being way too loud? In this video, I'll upgrade the main board on my Ender 3 and put an end to the noise. Welcome to Hardframe Soft, where we talk about 3D printing and use it to make interesting DIY projects. Today, I will be upgrading the main board on my Ender 3 to a Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3. This board seems to be regarded as the number one bang for buck upgrade for the Ender 3. So when I heard about it, I was immediately interested in it. I'm using the 1.2 version, but most of the video should be applicable to the other versions as well. The 2.0 version has some improvements over this one, but I couldn't justify the price increase for my use case. But before we start on the upgrade, I want to talk a bit about the reasons behind it. The most annoying noise on a 3D printer, for me at least, is the whining and whirring of the stepper motors. The stepper motors, as the name might imply, move in discrete steps. They move from one position to the next in a very short time and stay there until the next movement. This creates high frequency vibrations in the motor that then get transferred to the other parts of the machine and even the surface where the printer is standing on. These vibrations create a sound that can be quite noticeable even from across the house. I have seen quite a few videos on the subject, but I haven't seen anyone talk about why upgrading the mainboard and the stepper motor drivers can help with the noise. The reason why this motor noise can be reduced with new motor drivers is that they can modify the signals they use to control the motors. The datasheet on the TMC2209 drivers that are used here doesn't go into that much detail about how the driver modes work, but it does say it's using pulse width modulation to create a sine wave for smoother motion. There is also quite a bit of noise coming from the various fans on the printer, but to me that is not as distracting and can be quite easily blocked by walls. I'm interested in improving the noise situations for the fans as well, so let me know in the comments if you want to see a video on that. Another reason why I want to upgrade is the expandability. The SKR Mini E3 board has more connections for additional features such as automatic bed leveling and filament runout sensing. The processor is 32-bit, which means that it can support certain features in the firmware that need more processing power although this doesn't matter in the default setup. The board has a bootloader out of the box, so you don't need to get a separate programmer just to update or modify the firmware. There's also more memory for the firmware, so you're not gonna run out of memory as easily if you add more features. Now that we got the reasons out of the way, let's start with the actual upgrade. Remove the electronics box cover. There are two screws in the front, to access the last screw in the back, slide the bed to the front. Take a photo of the wiring so you can refer back to it when installing the new board. Next, we can start removing the wiring. There might be some glue holding the connectors in place, so that needs to be removed first. I just used pliers to grab onto the glue and wiggled it a bit to get it off. I start by removing the motor connectors. The connectors can be quite hard to remove even without the glue. Just be patient and wiggle them side to side and they'll come out. Next, remove the control panel cable. This is even stiffer, so be careful. Then remove the temperature sensor, stop switches and cooling fan connectors. Next, unscrew and remove the hot end heater wires the heat bed wires and the extruder temperature sensor wires. I move the other wires a bit to the side and disconnect the wires coming from the power supply. I remove the memory card and the four screws holding the main board in place. Next, we're going to install the new board. First, we need to put the included heat sinks on the stepper motor driver ICs. Just remove the film from the adhesive and push the heatsink onto the chip. I'm not sure if it's easier to connect the cables before or after screwing in the board, 
I decided to screw the board in first, since then I don't have to worry about it moving around. If you connect the cables first, you have more space to work with, since you can move the board around. All these connectors match in location with the stock main board. I start by connecting the wires from the power supply, because they are on the back of the board. Then I connect the extruder heater cartridge to the connector marked E3. Next I connect the hot and cooling fan. This connector on the board is simply marked VIN, since it's directly connected to the power input. That means that the fan will be on anytime the printer is powered on. As the last of the screw terminals, I connect the heat bed wires to the terminal marked HB. I double and triple check that the heat bed, hot end and power supply wires are connected correctly and securely to the screw terminals. There is a real risk of breaking the main board or the power supply if these wires come loose, so be extra careful. Next, I connect the part cooling fan, the extruder temperature sensors, the stepper motor cables for the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis and the extruder motor. Then the stop sensors for the x-axis, y-axis and the z-axis. Then I connect the electronics case fan and the control panel ribbon cable. Since I never make mistakes, I will already screw in the electronics cover. If you're not as confident, you can leave it open until you've made sure that the machine is working. Now that we have the new mainboard installed, let's try the different features to make sure everything is working correctly. We'll need to be ready to cut the power if we hear or see something that we're not expecting. Let's use the auto home feature to make sure that the motors and stops are working, then heat up the hot end and the bed. Move the extruder once the hot end has heated up. If everything works as expected, you can close the electronics cover and we can get started on our test print. You can immediately hear the difference. It's like night and day. When the printer is moving at slow or medium speeds, the stepper motors are almost silent. The fans become the number one source of noise on the printer. I guess those are the things I need to upgrade next. Anyway, uh, let's hear how the new board sounds compared to the old main board. If we talk about the print quality for a second, the two seem quite similar in terms of surface quality. There are some differences visible and I would give a slight edge to the new board. The firmware on the new board is slightly different, but both are just modified versions of Marlin. There are some improvements here, like more logical organization of some menus and extra confirmation dialogues to make misclicks less annoying. For example, when you start or stop a print, there's a confirmation dialog, so you don't accidentally stop that multi-day print that's just about to finish. That would be horrible. All in all, I think the SKR Mini E3 is a worthwhile upgrade, based on the noise benefits alone. It's simple to install, because the board mounts and connects to the printer exactly the same way as the stock board. You get all the expandability options you could ever hope for in an Ender 3. And you get all of this for 30 or 40 dollars. I can most certainly recommend this upgrade to anyone who wants to make their Ender 3 quieter and have more expandability options in the future. I'm going to leave links in the description below where you can buy these main boards. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and also consider subscribing. See you in the next one.